Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to deal with how to calculate probabilities, and in particular probabilities that require the application of the standard normal transformation. Okay, so this is going to deal with uh, the standard, standard normal transformation. Okay transformation and let us just uh, I suppose recap and uh, recap on the standard normal transformation and what it represents okay so the standard normal transformation is a formula uh, or transform that allows us to take a distribution uh, that's centered that has a mean value in other words the distribution is centered on its mean but that mean is not zero and the standard deviation of the distribution is also not one uh, and the transform allows us to transform a distribution with a particular mean and standard deviation uh, to a distribution that has standard deviation one and mean of zero okay and the formula looks something like this it's z of x uh, is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma Okay, so this is the formula that we're going to concentrate on uh, today, uh, and we're going to have a look at a number of, I suppose, scenarios. Okay, so let's have a look at this first scenario. And I had that written here. Uh, factory workers have average earnings of 660 euros. And these earnings, we know that there's, a, we know that they have a standard deviation of 35 euros. Okay, so this is a statement with respect to the population. In relation to the population, average earnings are the earnings of factory workers. So the mean of the population is 660 euros, and the standard deviation is 35 euros. And what this question is interested in is if we randomly select an employee uh, from this particular population, what is the probability that that employee that's randomly selected uh, earns less than 690 euros? Okay, so the first thing we always do with our particular questions is we look at the scenario and we identify the population mean and the population standard deviation. In this case, we know that factory workers' are av er average earnings are 660 euros. So in this situation, the population mean is equal to 660, okay? Uh, and also from the scenario, what we're given is the standard deviation. In other words, the population standard deviation is 35 euros. So in this situation, sigma is equal to 35. And we're always going to be looking for these two values when we're dealing with the standard normal transformation. And these will always be presented, in our case, uh, within the scenario of the question itself. Okay? So in this case, the population has a mean of 660 and a standard deviation of 35 euros. Okay, uh, and what we're interested in is if we randomly select an employee from this particular population with these particular parameters associated with them, what's the chances that that employee that's been randomly selected earns less than 690 euros? Okay, so the first thing we'll always do now is after we've identified the parameters associated with the population, we'll draw a diagram uh, to represent this particular scenario. Okay. Now, what we're always going to assume is we're always going to assume that the population is normally distributed, which means that this particular scenario can be represented uh, through a bell-shaped curve. Okay, uh, But this particular bell-shaped curve, and we know that the centre of these distributions always represent the mean. Okay? And in this situation, this bell-shaped curve has to represent the characteristics of the population. Okay? And we know that the population has a mean of 660. So this particular distribution is centred on 660. Okay? And it has a standard deviation of 35, which tells us something about the, I suppose, the curvature or the shape of the distribution itself. Yeah. Okay. Now the question is, uh, so these, this particular axis here now represents, I suppose, it represents observations. Yeah. Okay. Or represents people or factory workers. Yeah. And their particular earnings. So factory workers could earn 660 euros. They might earn less than 660 euros, or they might earn more than 660 euros. So this here is going to be our x variable. Yeah. In this situation, uh, this x represents a particular employee. Yeah. Okay. So the question is interested in what is the probability that the employee earns less than 690 euros? Okay. So where is that employee on this particular axis? Okay. Well, an employee that earns 690 euros uh, will be positioned here, exactly here on the axis or somewhere to the right hand side of 660. So this is 690. 
Okay. Now we're interested in anybody that earns less than 690. So we're interested in any observation to the left hand side of this 690. Yeah. Now what we're really being asked here is what's the probability okay, that the person selected at random or the factory worker selected at random, that's what X is going to represent in this scenario, earns less than 690 euros. Okay. So the, to, to figure this out, what we're going to deal with, because we know it's it normally distributed, uh, really what we're being asked is, can you tell me what the area is to the left hand side of 690? Okay, once we've figured out uh, how much area under the curve there is to the left hand side of 690, that represents the probability that the person selected at random will have earned less than 690. Okay. Now, unfortunately, yeah, our tables that we use, okay, and the tables that are defined within, within, I suppose, uh, your booklet, okay, which is your statistical formula and tables booklet, okay, uh, these tables uh, represent the cumulative probabilities for a standard normal distribution, okay. Now, a standard normal distribution has a mean of zero, okay, and has a standard deviation of one. Okay. So, unfortunately, we cannot look up these particular areas directly. What we have to do is we have to apply the standard normal transformation okay, to our values okay, to actually get a, I suppose, to actually transform them to the, to the standard normal curve. Okay. So, let's apply the standard normal uh, transformation. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these observations along the along this x-axis and we're going to substitute them into this standard normal transformation. So what we do is we just take the first observation that's here, the center point of our distribution. Okay. This is a trivial case, but we'll see why now in a second. Okay. So what we're interested in is where is where is 660? Where does 660 map to under the transformation? Okay. So when x is 660. Okay. In other words, if it was a worker that had average earnings of 660, by the transformation they're taken to, well, it's x, which is 660, minus the population mean, which is 660, okay, divided by the population standard deviation, which is 35. Okay. And what we can see here is that this becomes 0 over 35, which is equal to 0. So 660 under the transformation is taken to 0. Okay, brilliant. So the next question now that we have is where is 690 taken to? So what we need to do is we need to apply 690. We need to apply the transformation to 690. So let's test that. So Z when X is equal to 690 is equal to 690 minus, that 690 is the X, minus the mean which is 660. Okay, divided by the standard deviation which is 25. Okay, which gives us a value of 30 over 35 okay and when we do our division here okay I don't know whether you'll be able to see this on the calculator uh, because of the light shining down uh, but we have 30 divided by 35 gives us a value of 0 0.857 now our tables are only accurate to two decimal places so we'll just do the we'll just apply the typical round up round down strategy so this actually is equivalent to 0 0.86 Okay, brilliant. So, what's after happening when we apply the standard normal transformation? Our distribution that's centered on 660 has been transformed to a distribution that's centered on zero. So, this particular scenario now becomes a scenario with respect to the standard normal distribution. Okay, 660 was taken to zero, and 690 was taken to 0 0.86. 0 0.86 is on the right hand side of 0 and this axis here now represents the standard normal variable which is the z axis. Okay? So what we can actually see here now is that over in, in this scenario here we're interested in the probability of that a factory worker earns less than 690 euros and the area that we're interested in was the, to the left hand side of 690. In this situation here the probability that we're being asked to calculate is the probability Okay, of observing a Z score that's less than 0 0.86. Okay? And these are what we called earlier on in, in, in our introduction to the standard normal curve. We call these type 1 probabilities. Well, we define them as type 1 probabilities. So actually, in this situation, we're interested in, we're interested in the area to the left of 690 here. So we're interested in the area to the left of 0 0.86 in this situation. Okay? 
So, anytime we have a positive value, what should we should always do is we should always look that positive value up on our tables. Uh, and we know that the first column here in our tables represents the first significant digit and the first decimal digit of our z-scores. Okay? And the first row across here represents the second decimal digit of our z-scores. So in this situation, the first significant digit is 0, and the, second, uh, the first decimal digit is 8, so we're looking for 0 0.8, which is here. Okay? And the second decimal digit is 6, so we're going to come across to the column labelled 6, and we're going to come down and triangulate, which gives us a value of 0 0.8051. Okay? So let's just write that down here. When we went to our tables, and um, when we looked up the Z value 0 0.86, we came down to 0 0.80, and we came across to 0 0.06, and what that gave us is that gave us a value of 0 0.8051. In other words, when we look up 0 0.86 on the tables, we get a value of 0 0.8051, which is the area to the left-hand side of 0 0.86 under this standard normal curve. In other words, the probability of observing a z-score less than 0 0.86 is equal to 0 0.8051. Okay? But let's remember that through our transform, and if we reverse our transform, we're back to our original, our original question, which was with respect to a population centred on 660. Okay? So what we have here now is, for our answer, is that the probability of randomly selecting a worker and them having earnings less than 690 is equivalent to the question of uh, what is the probability of observing a z-score less than 0 0.86 which we know is equal to 0 0.8051 okay? in other words the probability of randomly selecting a worker and that worker has earnings less than 690 is equal to 0 0.8051 which is approximately equal to 80.51%. Okay? So, if the population with respect to factory workers and their average earnings has got a mean of 660 euros and a standard deviation of 35 euros, well then if we randomly selected a person from that particular population, the likelihood that they would earn less than 690 euros is, well, uh, 80.51% of the time of our selection, they would earn less than 690 euros, or the probability of observing a factory worker with earnings less than 690 is 0 0.8051. Okay, uh, and that sort of concludes this video, uh, and this was uh, one of the first videos with respect to these types of scenarios, and we're dealing with what's known as type 1 probabilities, or what we define as type 1 probabilities. Okay, so thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.